this talk will be about the theorem due to Burnside, which states that if we have a group G, which is order the form P to the M times Q to the N for primes P and Q, then G is solvable. Um, we're going to prove this using character theory, which is similar to Burnside's original proof. And for many years, it was an open problem to find a proof of this that didn't use character theory. Um, there was a proof um, found a few decades ago, but it's much, much harder than the proof using character theory. So the proof makes use of the center of the group ring. So um, suppose we call the center of the group ring um, ZG. Um, suppose you call this R. So this is the integral group ring rather than the complex group ring. And this is a basis as a Z module um, consisting of the elements where you just sum over all elements of the conjugacy class. Um, and it's, it's very easy to check that these um, span the center of the group ring. Now suppose V is an irreducible representation of, of G, so irreducible complex representation. Then we get a homomorphism from the center of the group ring to um, the endomorphism ring of V. And in fact, since V is irreducible, this must lie in the center of the endomorphism ring and the center of the endomorphism ring of V is just the um, ring of complex number C. So for every irreducible representation, we get a homomorphism from this ring R to the complex numbers. And we can write it down explicitly as follows. So it takes the element, um, if we sum over all elements of some conjugacy class, it takes this to the element chi of C times the size of the conjugacy class divided by the dimension of the irreducible representation V. So V has character chi, and um, this is, of course, the size of the conjugacy class C. And the reason for this is that if you look at this expression here, this is just the trace of um, sum over C and C of C, um, because each element of C has trace chi of C, and there are this number of them. And we have to divide it by the dimension of the representation, because if you've got an element at the center of a representation, then the trace is equal to A times the dimension of the representation. So to find out what A is, you have to divide by the, by the dimension. So you notice um, fr fr from this, we're going to show that um, the, this number here is an algebraic integer. So chi of c times c divided by chi of 1 is an algebraic integer. It's pretty trivial to show that chi of c is an algebraic integer because it's just a sum of eigenvalues of c which are roots of unity. So it's much more interesting to, to say that you can divide it by the dimension of the representation provided you put in this factor here. Um, and this is quite easy to show because if we look at the homomorphism from the center of the group ring to the complex numbers. And we notice the image is a subring of C and is finitely generated as a Z module because R is finitely generated as a Z module. So the elements are algebraic integers because if you've got a, um, a subring of the complex numbers that's finitely generated as a Z module, its elements are algebraic integers. Um, in particular, um, this is the image of a certain element of R under this homomorphism. So this is also an algebraic integer. Um, and we can give an application of this. The application is that chi of one, the dimension of the representation, 
divides the order of the group G. And you can see this because by the orthogonality relations for characters, we know that the order of G is just sum over all um, conjugacy classes, the size of the conjugacy class times chi of the conjugacy class times chi bar of an element of the conjugacy class. So this is just the, the, the saying that the norm of the character chi is equal to G. Now what we can do is we can just divide both sides by chi of one. And we notice that this bit here is an algebraic integer because we just said so up there. And this bit here is also an algebraic integer because it's a sum of roots of unity. So this is an algebraic integer. And as this side is rational, this side must be an integer. So the dimension of any irreducible representation divides the order of the group G. Um, by the way, this only holds for complex representations. For example, if we take G to be the group of order three, then it has an irreducible representation on um, a two dimensional real vector space because you can just rotate by a third of a revolution. And the dimension of this is two, which certainly doesn't divide the order of G, which is three. Um, so um, this also fails for algebraically closed fields of characteristic greater than zero. The dimension of an irreducible representation need not divide the order of a group. Um, so now we move on to Burnside's theorem. So suppose G is order P to the M, Q to the N. So we want to show that G is solvable. Well, by induction, um, it's enough to show that if G is simple, that if G is simple, this implies G is cyclic, because a minimal counterexample to this must be simple. And if it's cyclic, that means it's solvable. Um, now, if G has order P to the MQ to the N, G has a conjugacy class um, of order a power of P, at least if um, sort of order P to the K for some K, because we can just take an element of the center of a Seelhoff subgroup of order Q to the N, and um, that will have that the centralizer of that will have index a power of p, so the conjugacy class is order a power of p. Um, so it's enough to show that if G is simple, is any simple group with a conjugacy class, with a non-trivial conjugacy class, of order a power of p, order a order power of any prime, then g is cyclic. So this is what we're going to prove in the rest of the talk. We can now forget about g being a product of two primes because this is the only um, thing we're going to, um, this is the only thing we're going to prove. So, um, in order to do this, what we do is we first look at the orthogonality relations. So we know that if we sum over all characters chi, we have chi of 1 times chi of c um, is, is equal to 0. So here we're taking c to be a non-trivial conjugacy class um, um, of order a power of, of a prime, say, let's call this prime P. Um, well, one term in this is if we take the trivial character chi one of one, then um, chi one of C is equal to one. So this is equal to one. So we can find some character chi 
not equal to the trivial character so that first of all chi of one is not divisible by p and secondly chi of c is not equal to zero because if every character was at either dimension divisible by p or chi of c equals zero, then all terms in this other than the first term would be divisible by p, so their sum couldn't be equal to zero. And what we're going to do is just to use these two facts together with the fact that the size of the conjugacy class c is um, a power of uh, is a power of prime. And we're, we're just going to deduce from this that if G is simple, then it must be cyclic. And this, this is kind of rather remarkable because we don't really seem to have enough information to prove anything much about G. I mean, the, the, these two facts that chi of one not divisible by P and chi of C not being zero, both seem to be very weak pieces of information to use. So how do we do this? Well, um, First of all, we recall the number a, which is chi of c times the size of c divided by chi of one is an algebraic integer. Um, secondly, we notice that the order of c and chi of one are co-prime because this is a power of p and this is not divisible by p. Um, so what we want to show is that if we omit this factor C, then, then chi of C divided by chi of 1 is still an algebraic integer. And that's quite easy because since these two are co-prime, you know that M times chi of 1 plus N times the order of C is equal to 1 for some M N. And then if we take the number... Um, um, we know that uh, chi of c times the order of c is equal to a times chi of 1, where a is this algebraic integer. And we can now just write chi of c is equal to chi of c times m chi of 1 plus n times the order of c, because that's just 1, which is equal to um, chi of C times M times chi of 1 plus N chi of C times the order of C. And um, we know this is divisible by chi of 1 and this is divisible by chi of 1 by what we set up there. So chi of C divided by chi of 1 is an algebraic integer. So that's where we use the fact that the conjugacy class has order of power of p. We can take out this factor here. Um, and we also notice that this is not equal to zero because chi of c is not equal to zero. Um, and now it's fairly easy to finish off because um, we look at the number chi of c over chi of 1, and um, chi of c is a sum of chi of 1 roots of unity. So all conjugates of chi of c over chi of 1 um, are a sum of chi of 1 roots of unity divided by chi of 1, so they have absolute value less than or equal to one. And now we look at the norm of this algebraic number, which is the product of all conjugates. Well, the product of all conjugates of an algebraic integer is an integer, and it can't be zero because chi of c is non-zero, so is greater than or equal to one. And if you've got a product of numbers that are all less than or equal to one, and the product is greater than or equal to one, we see that chi of c over chi of 1 must actually have absolute value equal to 1. And now we'll show that if from this fact that, that if g is simple, then it must be cyclic. So we know that chi of c is equal to chi of 1. 
And this is a sum of chi of one roots of unity. Well, the only way the sum of chi of one roots of unity can be equal to chi of one in absolute value is these roots of unity must all be the same. So chi of C is just equal to chi of one times zeta for some um, root of unity. Um, and um, now if G is simple, this implies the um, um, that the, the, the conjugacy class C is in the center of the image of G in the ring of endomorphisms of V. So um, if the image of G, so the image of G in here must be non-trivial, um, which means that C must actually be in the center of G. which as G is simple, implies G is cyclic. So this concludes the proof of Burnside's theorem that any group of order divisible by at most two primes must be solvable. Um, this is of course best possible because if you've got a, um, a group of order 60, um, this gives you the group A5, which is not simple and this is divisible by three different primes. Um, in fact, um, another fairly easy theorem you can prove using the transfer says that if you've got a simple non-cyclic group, then the smallest prime dividing it must divide it to at least the second power. And if you combine this with Burnside's theorem, it immediately implies that any group of order less than 60 cannot possibly be simple because it, it, the minimum possible order is divisible by at least three primes and the smallest prime must appear twice. So, so this is obviously the smallest possible order.